Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Retail Archaeology. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Foothills Mall, which is located on the northwest side of Tucson, Arizona. That sign really stood out to me when we first got here. And here's a long shot from that sign down to where you can see the Barnes & Noble, which is one of the anchors that this mall has. Here's a, another similar exterior sign. And I, I love that color scheme, it's just awful. And this mall does have a 15 screen AMC movie theater, which has kind of an interesting history that we'll get into more later on in the video. Let's take a look at a little bit more of the exterior of the mall. Now that there is a closed restaurant that we'll get a better look at once we get inside. And then there's a uh, mall entrance there. Now this was super interesting though, this food court sign. That is amazingly 90s. I feel like one of the places in the food court should be the Max from Saved by the Bell. Look at that. Alright, let's move on to the interior of the mall. Now there you can see the guest services desk and a really interesting light fixture. There's a bunch of interesting light fixtures like that all throughout the mall. And to the right, you'll see my producer Mark wrecking a shot. <laughs> now, originally this mall opened in 1982 with high-end retailers, but um, by the 90s that wasn't working out so well for them, so they switched over to kind of an outlet mall kind of thing, and I guess that worked out pretty well for them up until recently. You can see here the uh, guest services center is basically abandoned. There's not much going on here anymore. But I did find this mall walker log book. This was weird. Never seen anything like this before. And uh, look at that date on the bottom of the page. It's pretty old. And then there's like slips of paper with like a bunch of motivational stuff on them. And then I guess mall walkers, like a club, I guess literally log when they walked. I have no idea if this was still being kept up or not. Hard to tell because of the old date on the bottom of that first page. But that was sitting there. But other than that, you know, guest services is pretty much abandoned. Over to our right there, we've got a Bath and Body Works, and from what I can gather, that's been there for a while. That's some older store frontage for them. Pretty cool to see, though. And uh, we'll take a look at the map real quick, just so you can get an idea of the size of this mall. Now, originally, when this mall opened, it had a Goldwaters. And uh, at one point, it even had a Dillard's as well. But like I mentioned, in the 90s, the high-end retailers had gone and the mall was mostly empty. And uh, they rebranded it and brought in outlet malls and stuff. And I guess that was really successful and uh, kind of saved it. And then um, some new outlet malls opening up in nearby Marana um, really sucked the business out of this thing. I do like those skylights above the food court. That's pretty cool. And then here's the uh, food court. And we filmed this on a Saturday afternoon. I think this was about 1.30 to 2 p.m. ish. So that's not a good look for a uh, food court in a mall on a Saturday afternoon. Here's a uh, closer look. I think that's the first time I've seen an Arby's in a mall food court. For as dead as this mall was though, there was still quite a few choices in the food court. Now this is right inside the entrance where we saw that cool sign. So they have a Sparrow and lots of empty tables. 
This mall has a lot of archways and columns. And really cool tile work too, I do like it, it's very colorful. I don't know if it's original though, it doesn't seem very 80s to me. This mall did open originally in 1982, and uh, this looks a little bit more 90s to me, so um, I'm assuming this has been updated at some point, but I could be wrong. Now over to the right here is that closed restaurant that we saw earlier in the mall exterior footage. And unfortunately, like a lot of things in this mall, there's not a lot of label scar, so it's hard to tell um, what a lot of things are, and this restaurant is uh, that case. I, I have no idea what it was. Um, if you do know what it was, let me know um, what that was, what it was down in the comments below, because I'd be interested to know. It looks like it was a pretty decent restaurant. I mean, it's got to be decent. It's got a fountain in it, right? This high was all very clean in this mall too, that was something else I noticed, this was a very clean mall even though it was dead. And of course I've got to try the door. And once again, unfortunately, no label scar, so I can't tell what this was originally. Looks like it's a storage mess now. see more columns down that way. And to the right of us is the Barnes and Noble and we'll take a look at that in a minute. Um, but that was originally a Goldwater's when this mall opened and that kind of fits the theme of a upper class shopping center which is what they were trying to go for when this mall opened in 1982. Um, but unfortunately that didn't work and by the early 90s this mall was pretty much dead and then they uh, rebranded it Brought in some outlet type stores things like that and then that seemed to save the mall and the mall thrived for quite a while up until a few years ago um, When a newer outlet mall was built and a lot of stores started moving out of this one in favor of that one which again caused this mall to die and, and that's why I've named this video the mall that died twice because essentially that's what's happened. This mall has died twice and that's unfortunate. Now let's take a closer look at the Barnes & Noble real quick. Um, now the footage we're seeing inside the Barnes & Noble was actually provided by a uh, YouTuber Skyvader, who was uh, nice enough to let me use this footage because unfortunately I was unable to film inside the Barnes & Noble when I was here because it was just too busy to film. Um, it was one of the few busy parts of the mall. So um, looks like it's just your typical Barnes & Noble. It'd be cooler if it was still Goldwaters. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some uh, shenanigans with my producer, Mark. Do it, Mark. Can you, I gotta drive, gotta get the photo. Can you, can you, okay, that'll work. Do you need me to, can you put the dollar in it or? I can't reach it. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Nein, nein, mal kurz da. Oh my god, I got a... I got a crouch to jump. Is there a star button or something? Did it just take your dollar? Game over. Oh my god. So what did you think of Casey Cobra? Oh, it was a pain in the ass. <laughs> oh, it hurts. <laughs>was actually quite a bit of stuff built up around this mall like a Walmart and other stores like that and the anchor stores seem to be busy like Barnes & Noble, uh, Ross, Party City but all of those have entrances from the outside in. It's almost difficult to even see that there's a mall here and the few people that we did see in here were either mall walkers or were just using it as a air conditioned to pass through to get to other parts of the shopping center which is really unfortunate because this mall is really pretty inside. I like it. I mean, it's a little bit much on the arches and columns, but I really do like the tile work. A lot of the light fixtures are interesting, and even though there are a lot of arches and columns, I still like it. It does look quite a bit different than a lot of malls in the Phoenix area, which I'm used to seeing. There's also a lot of plants in this mall, which is nice, and they're actually still being taken care of. And there's a Bon Worth in this mall. You don't see those very often. I have never seen a skill crane this big before in the shape of a uh, Volkswagen bus. That was kind of interesting. And that's a interesting set of passengers there. <laughs> you can see on this side, those are actually skylights, which is nice. It makes them all nice and bright. I like skylights in malls. The other nice thing about this mall was too is this was one of the easier uh, filming sessions I've had at a dead mall. There was security here but um, either they didn't notice us or they didn't care that we were filming because it was very laid back and I was able to pretty much film you know whatever I wanted for as long as I wanted and that was really nice. The whole mess of arches and columns there. And a very common dead mall fixture, the Bath and Body Works once again. And there was still a functioning Mrs. Fields. I haven't seen one of those in a very long time. I don't think there's any of those left in any malls in the Phoenix area. So 
some more of the interesting light fixtures and plants hanging from the ceiling. There's a sign for the Ross, another anchor of this mall that's still there. And the Ross seemed to be fairly busy as well, but um, again, not a lot of people were going through the Ross into the mall. And then to the left is the AMC Theater. Now the interesting story behind this theater is, is this is the fourth name this theater has had. It originally opened as the Pitt Foothills 4 Theater and then became the Odeon Foothills 7 Theater. It then became the Lowe's Cineplex 15 and then finally the AMC 15 Theater that you see now. That's quite the history for one mall theater. This mall does still have an open Claire's, surprisingly. That is a struggling mall chain. And here's one of the other anchors, the Party City. Kind of a weird anchor for a mall. I don't think I've ever seen that before. And another nice skylight. Levi's outlet store which is still here but I, I got to imagine that's gonna leave eventually and then, uh, there's the Ross down there and then off to the right there is the sign for the mall management office and lots of plants I love all the plants in this mall I love the skylights the bright floors it's such a shame that such a bright and colorful mall is so dead If you've got any interesting stories about this mall, like if this was your childhood mall or whatever, I'd love to hear those, so leave those down in the comments below. I just can't believe how few people there were in here for a Saturday afternoon in a mall that seemed to be in an area that was actually very busy, and actually really nice too, this is a nice area. Unfortunately, there's just bigger and nicer, newer malls nearby that are killing this one. Let's go ahead and wrap up our video tour of the Foothills Mall in Tucson here. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you follow the social media links that are provided at the end of the video. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the tour with uh, this ironic sign here. Uh, brand new beginnings at Foothills Mall. Doesn't look like it. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash resellarchaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Thanks for checking out the first of many videos from Retail Archaeology's trip to Tucson. If you enjoyed this video, why don't you check out one of these other ones? And also, don't forget to hit the uh, like and subscribe buttons, and also to follow us at the social media links there, because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the channel. And as always, thanks for watching.